Welcome to another episode of the Informing Choices Minipod. In the fourth of six episodes in this New Year mini-series of the Informing Choices Minipod, looking across the next 10 years, we're going to explore the amazing potential of fungi to make a significant contribution to our sustainable future. Right now, mushrooms are in the spotlight for use as a meat substitute, in medicine, bioremediation of oil and toxic chemicals, leather alternative, plastic alternative for some packaging, and mycelium networks in forests for carbon sequestration. They might be one of the most potent organisms to help us combat climate change. To explore the opportunities presented by mushrooms and mycelium to help resolve some of humanity's biggest challenges, I'm joined by strategic communicator and futurist Gina Clifford. Gina, talk us through your perspectives here. What could we be looking back on in 2033 that was significant in 2023? Thank you, Steve. And I appreciate the uh, wonderful introduction. So, you know, when we think about fungus, a lot of us usually either our minds go in one of two directions. We're either thinking about those wonderful mushrooms in the supermarket that we each, each love or hate, depending on your tastes. Or we go to those magic mushrooms that give us the psychedelic side effects that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when, when they're consumed. And there's, but, but that's just scratching the surface. And as how you said in your introduction, there, if you look at uh, the fungal networks, the mycelium, the roots of the, the fruiting body of the mushroom, there's all sorts of applications that we're just on the verge of exploring. You know, some startup companies are trying to make leather and oil remediation, like you said, but they're struggling because there's there's still new science, it's new chemistry, there's a lot of lack of investment, or they're just, you know, maybe let's start with carbon sequestration, because I think right now where everyone is thinking about climate change, there's a lot of carbon in the atmosphere, and even if we stopped carbon polluting right now, there's still so much carbon in the air that um, stopping emissions alone isn't going to solve our problems. But the interesting thing about mycelium networks is, is that they can work with trees to pull in carbon and then hold it, and retain it in the soil indefinitely. And then they actually use some of that carbon, they break some of it down, and they offer it to other plants and nutrients in the soil. I mean, there's there are volumes of books and lots of research about the uh, connections that forests have to trees, especially to each other, using mycelium as uh, you know the, they call it the wood wide web. It's <laughs> basically a, a, a fungal network that acts kind of like our internet for plants and trees. They use it to either communicate with each other or to share nutrients. And so the mycelium networks will take sugar from trees and they'll give them some CO2 and some nutrients that they need. So it's an exchange that happens at a chemical level, but it's expansive and it, you know, it underpins much of our forests and the soil in the soil. So there's a huge untapped opportunity there in the future to how could human humanity think about that as a way, instead of it just happening naturally, could we develop, I don't want to call it uh, synthetic ways, but nurture it, you know, farm it and use it in places instead of sucking the CO2 out of the air, which hasn't proven to be all that useful to actually use natural processes that are already in place, but maybe nurture them and, you know, farm them. So that's, that's one idea. Sounds absolutely fascinating, isn't it? And actually using the natural world to help create a better planet for humans. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's just in one area. So if we think about, um, there's also an initiative on plastic replacement currently being used as replacement for packing material and even in some cosmetic companies packaging. But what if it could be a biodegradable, home compostable packaging on every single thing that you currently purchase from, you know, processed foods, convenience foods, uh, fast food containers, cups, all the stuff that you see on the side of the road that gets tossed out and sits there indefinitely, doesn't break down in nature. 
it, you know, there's a huge opportunity for uh, mycelium based products to become a replacement for larger parts of our plastic usage. When you just kind of think through the implications of that in in, in your mind, it's absolutely extraordinary, isn't it? The ability to create a um, packaging that breaks down naturally. I mean, from from use, um, uh, from uh, disposable. I mean, every, that's uh, it's kind of a no brainer, really, if we can manage that, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. I think that there are high barriers because right now, you know, uh, that that natural material does break down quickly if it's exposed to moisture over long periods right. of time doesn't necessarily have right now have all of the properties to uh, su be successful in all of the different packaging applications but that's where you know focus on investments and in r d and, and we're talking 10 years into the future let's make that a reality yeah that's that's how i look at it let's invest and make that a reality um you know and then let's switch to fashion and fashion is always in the news, right? especially around sustainability, this fast fashion, the amount of clothing that gets thrown away because it only gets worn for a very short period of time. It, um, the processing, the chemicals that go into making garments. Mm. I mean, right now, mycelium is being grown as a leather replacement, um, but it's only in the, uh, I guess I would say the luxury fashion goods yeah. markets because it's still very expensive to manufacture. But um, there are companies out there that are carbon neutral, that use 100% no plastic uh, to materials to make the, they grow the mycelium. They make a beautiful, soft, luxurious leather that um, from for most people, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between animal leather and this mushroom leather. But again, it's expensive. It's a very small production compared to the established leather markets. So there is a potential there, but it, it isn't right now, you know, something that you and I would just go out and expect all of our shoes and all of our jackets and handbags and leather wallets to be made from because it's expensive. But the opportunity is that with R&D and investment in 10 years, we could all be wearing clothing that isn't based on animal products. and. Um, you know, there was an interesting uh, piece of research that I found where one of these companies is actually thinking about making new materials that don't exist, that can't exist from the things that we have now. And one of the ideas was because mycelium can grow on any substrate in any shape and any form, they're actually taking Kevlar and growing leather over Kevlar. So you get this lightweight, really, you know, strong material that's also soft and supple and beautiful. So there's a huge opportunity there to create new types of uh, materials. Fascinating. So, I mean, let's talk about food. I don't know if you food. like let's mushrooms. Always or... talk about food. <laughs> so whether you like or dislike eating mushrooms, mushrooms, actually the fruiting body of a fungal uh, system is just part of what makes fungus uh, important especially in the food domain. Actually, the, the flavor of mushrooms might be in foods in the future that don't exist today. So, so what I'm saying is that you use extracts of mycelium and mushrooms to make new kinds of processed food that isn't meat, that isn't necessarily mushroom or vegetable-based because mushrooms are a fungus, they're not animals and they're not plants. But, um, but they have a lot of flavor. And so there's opportunities to use them to flavor new kinds of food that maybe is a little bit better for us because mushrooms and uh, fungal species in general tend to be uh, lower in cholesterol, higher in protein, and have a lot of interesting medicinal uh, properties that we're still uncovering. So I think that uh, that leads into medicine. When you think about um, penicillin, Penicillin was, you know, basically came from a yeast, but a yeast is a type of fungus. If you if you think about it, yeast, molds, and fungus are all together in the same group. So there are lots of research opportunities right now going on around how can we use it to fight tumors, cancerous tumors? How can we use uh, fungal species to fight diabetes? And there are there are really exciting research 
studies that show that they're they're viable for those things and we can grow them we can um, cultivate them and in some cases we've already been cultivate cultivating them for thousands of years humanity has been you know chinese herbal medicine has been mm-hmm. using um, different types of mushrooms to treat some of these things for a very long time and now researchers are actually looking at that from a scientific perspective and um, in some cases are seeing viability in that area that the, viability that's a critical question isn't it i mean looking across some of the things you've, you've spoken about there be it um uh, the, the carbon issue be it food um, particularly medicines and, and and fashion it seems like economic viability um which is likely to come through development experimentation just like almost any other piece of technology is critical for those ideas to gain critical mass exactly and, and i guess the over overarching theme here is that this one type i i guess you could call it a material or, or, or an organism yeah could have systemic change across many different parts of our lives of the earth so you, you said it again our food our medicine our, our you know climate stabilization uh the clothing we wear it gives us an opportunity to live a little bit more in balance with nature instead of creating processes for our lives that make things worse for nature. So it, it there's an opportunity there as we think about climate change and we think about the future, how can we live more sustainably and maybe more in balance with our world? That's one opportunity. Like mycelium is a huge opportunity to just that one product, that one organism however you want to describe it has all of these different applications and we're just at the beginning uh, gina th- that's been absolutely fascinating and and the the real kind of light bulb moment for me i suppose is that something as basic and i'm sure many people would consider fungi as 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 pretty basic the ability for human ingenuity to take that very basic material that basic fungi and create systematic change over a decade, I think is really, is really optimistic, actually. I mean, if you think about it, that's what we've always done. If you think yeah. about lycra and spandex and materials that we created, humanity has always been really great at finding something and scaling it and applying it to our world. Why not take a material grown in nature that has the opportunity to create balance in the world and use our human ingenuity to make that happen. That's a brilliant way to end. Gina, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Do let your friends and colleagues know about the Informing Choices mini pod, and there'll be another episode along very soon.